Tonight, the family of an undocumented Guatemalan man asking for help after their loved one was left for dead in South Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office hopeful that remains found overnight could belong to a woman who's been missing since March. And a local girl's family wants to raise awareness after she woke up one morning unable to move. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming from here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Tonight, the Bear County Sheriff's Office continuing to search for a missing undocumented immigrant from Guatemala. Marcos Vasquez Ramirez, who may also go by Eduardo Lopez, is believed to be dead. He was traveling from Guatemala to Houston in a group. Ramirez had some sort of medical episode, and that group left him near a ranch off Loop 1604 and Pleasanton Road. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, he had a heart condition. The man's family sent a video that was then forwarded to BCSO asking that they return Ramirez to his family for a proper burial. Anyone with any information is asked to call the BCSO Missing Persons Unit. That number is 210-335-6000. Meanwhile, another mystery in North Bear County, human remains found on private property not far from where a missing mother and business owner lived. Could they be the remains of Andreen McDonald? Sheriff Javier Salazar saying today he is hopeful, but it is too early to know for sure. The remains were found last night off of Specht Road that's north of 1604 and west of Highway 281. While investigators work to identify the remains, McDonald's husband, Andre McDonald, remains on house arrest, charged with tampering with evidence in her disappearance. Search parties had combed that area since McDonald was reported missing March 1st, but Sheriff Salazar says that that exact location had not been searched. He also revealed that the bones looked bleached. So how did they get into that condition and how long does that take? And could those answers provide information into whether the remains do belong to Andreen McDonald? Patty Santos gets some insight from an expert who studies skeletal remains. They're uh, they're pretty bleached out. Um, they've been out in the sun for at least several months. Texas State University anthropologist Daniel Westcott says sun bleaching of human remains could happen quickly in the Texas heat. They're out on the surface in Texas, so the things that are typically going to happen is that, of course, you have the normal decomposition process, but you also uh, have a lot of scavengers, that, especially vultures, that will uh, feed on the remains. And then once those bones are exposed in the sun, it doesn't take very long for them to become start to become bleached white. We're going to help somebody. Robert Green with the search group Chain Breakers is hopeful the remains found on a private property on Speck Road are those of Andreen McDonald. Especially with it being so close to her house, we're just we're hoping that it's her. McDonald's home is just about six miles away from where the remains were found Thursday. She was reported missing March 1st. Search parties began combing that area shortly after. While they are optimistic about the findings, Green says the group will hit the pavement for another search tomorrow. We don't want any more time to pass, you know, if for some reason it's not her. So most likely, yes, we'll be out there tomorrow in a different area. And because they can't cross into private property, they ask owners for a favor. With as many missing people in San Antonio, that if they hear somebody's missing, just go out and check your property pushing to have an identity of the human remains with the use of dental records in a couple of days once the body is removed from the scene. He expects investigators to continue to collect evidence into the weekend. Myra. All right, thanks, Patty. We are getting new insight tonight on murder charges dropped against a 16 year old who stabbed another teen girl to death. The district attorney's office says that the Madison High School student acted in self defense. This happened back in March. The teen girl's defense attorney says that she was lured outside by a supposed friend. The girl felt uneasy about that invitation, so she grabbed a steak knife. She came out, was standing there waiting for this alleged friend of hers when the two complainants came from different directions with hoods and jumped her. That confrontation ended with the 16 year old stabbing the two 18 year olds. Caitlin Castilleja was stabbed to death. The other teen was injured. The call was made to rule this case self defense after an interview with a witness backed up the teen story. Prosecutors had planned on trying the 16 year old girl as an adult, but again, those charges were dropped. It is hard for anyone to imagine waking up one morning unable to move. 
That's what happened to a San Antonio teenager. After testing, doctors diagnosed 15-year-old Caitlin Barker with Guillain-Barre syndrome, or GBS. It's an autoimmune disorder that causes a person's body to essentially attack itself. Caitlin has been in the hospital since last week, suffering from this rare disorder. Her parents say she's normally healthy and active, and it's been heartbreaking to see her suffer. You know, just as a parent to sit there and see your, you know, your daughter go from being a busy body active, can't sit still, to just laying in a bed overnight, paralyzed, can't breathe on her own, can't eat on her own. It's not something anybody would want to go through. There is some hopeful news here. The CDC reports that most people recover from Guillain-Barre syndrome. Coming up on the night beat, the family speaks about how they're dealing with this illness and why they feel it's now their mission to raise awareness about GBS. Now let's turn to the nine at nine. These are some of the biggest stories making headlines around the world, around the country and right here at home. Details tonight on the new federal charges R. Kelly is now facing. Investigators are searching for answers after an airplane was stolen and then crashed into the ocean and a major Indian city facing a severe water shortage. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Disgraced R&B singer R. Kelly arrested overnight in Chicago on federal charges of child pornography, obstruction of justice and racketeering. The New York indictment pins Kelly as the leader of a criminal enterprise comprised of members of his entourage that allegedly recruited women and girls to engage in illegal sexual activity with the star. I'm confident that the investigation has collected overwhelming evidence that we will prevail in court. The musician is expected to appear in court July 16th. Here at home, two men shot and robbed on the city's west side early this morning. According to police, the men were walking toward a Circle K on General McMullen when two other men approached and demanded their belongings. Despite giving their things up, the victims were shot. They were both found and taken to the hospital. Police are still searching for the attackers. An Illinois man facing charges in connection with the deaths of 29 dogs. Earlier this year, a fire broke out at the kennel that the suspect owns, killing the animals. But he's accused of mistreating them before that fire even started. Investigators say the dogs suffered puncture wounds and dehydration and were forced to stay in cages that were too small. The cause of the fire that ultimately killed the dogs is still under investigation. Surveillance video released in the case of a plane theft in California. Investigators believe it was stolen from the airport by a 64 year old member of the area flying club. The plane later crashed into the ocean. Investigators still don't know why the plane was stolen or what caused it to crash. This is a bizarre case. You know, we've had officers here working for decades and they have never investigated a stolen airplane. A Maui brush fire temporarily forces residents from their homes. Those neighbors have since been allowed back in, but Maui County's mayor cautions that that fire was still an active threat. The fire was first reported yesterday morning and has burned at least 10,000 acres. Chennai has become the first major Indian city to face an acute water shortage. Every morning, millions of residents line up to fill cans and pots of water from trucks parked across the street. Hospitals, businesses and schools have been hit the hardest. New video shows the moment a North Carolina KFC explodes. That explosion happened after the restaurant was closed for the night. Employees closing up reported smelling gas moments before the blast. Luckily, no one was hurt. Investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. A dramatic water rescue caught on camera in Ohio. Five teens became trapped in a sewer tunnel and were swept away by rushing water. The police officer who rescued them first spotted two of the boys near the mouth of the tunnel. He quickly realized there were three more deeper inside. With the help from the fire department, the officer was able to pull all of the boys to safety. A mystery in Vermont after police discovered more than 30 cannabis plants in the state house flower beds. Police don't know who planted them there, but they say they are not part of the state's normal garden. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. <laughs> Trickery. <laughs> Meteorologist Katie Blake joining us tonight, and we're all thinking about the weekend. 
Yes, it's going to be pretty quiet here at home. I think by Sunday we have a slightly better chance at an isolated shower or storm uh, and that will have a little something to do with Barry. So while the worst of tropical storm Barry will be well to the east of us and is going to wreak havoc on parts of Louisiana, uh, I do expect Barry to toss us some high cloud cover this weekend and maybe uh, enough little energy for an isolated shower or storm on Sunday. Bottom line though, staying hot this weekend and into next week. Here's a look at Barry this evening on satellite and radar. There's a a lot of cloud cover here that even extends over uh, touching the Texas coast here, but some of these heavier bands of rain are starting to move a little bit further inland this evening. As of the 7 p.m. update, uh, still a tropical storm. Winds would have to get up to 74 miles per hour for uh, Barry to become a Category 1 hurricane. There's still a little bit of time for that to happen overnight tonight and before landfall early tomorrow morning. So Barry will work through Louisiana during the day tomorrow and then through the rest of the weekend into early next week, a little bit further north and east, but rain still expected and heavy rain expected into the far western part of Tennessee as far north as Tennessee. So this will definitely be uh, a big rainmaker, but the area that will be hit the hardest that is South Louisiana, really from Baton Rouge over to New Orleans and then down to the coast spots. They are looking at 10 to 20 inches of rain. Some locally higher totals uh, will be possible. So while they're dealing with that, some high cloud cover will head our way from Barry and then a chance of an isolated shower or storm. As we get into Sunday, I'm going to show you future casts coming up here in just a few minutes, and we'll take a look at what next week has in store, Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. A new 190,000 square foot VA clinic is soon coming to sit the city's northwest side. Ground was broken on that project. The Northwest Healthcare Center today. Here are some renderings of what that center will look like once it's actually finished. The new facility will be located on Rogers Road and Highway 151. It will be a one stop shop for veterans primary and mental health care needs and will help accommodate the growing number of veterans moving to San Antonio. Construction is expected to last 18 to 21 months. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. Let's take a look. Our first one tonight is about a scandal that has been in the headlines all week long. The claim prosecutors struck a secret plea deal with financier Jeffrey Epstein under the Obama administration. Here are the facts that no prosecution deal between Epstein and federal prosecutors was signed in 2008. The deal allowed Epstein to plead guilty to state charges of soliciting a minor for prostitution rather than more serious federal charges. But Obama didn't take office until January 2009. That was after then U.S. Attorney Alexander Acosta entered into the secret agreement. Acosta resigned from his post as Labor Secretary today following all this backlash. Here's another claim tonight. If President Obama could remove the citizenship question from the 2010 census without the Supreme Court's approval, why does President Donald Trump need permission to put it back on? While this claim has spread widely on social media and blogs, it is inaccurate. Obama did not have the question removed from the last census. The Bureau has not asked about citizenship status on a main census form since 1950. At our last claim of the night, the FDA will require ice cream cartons be sealed with plastic in response to that video of the teenage girl licking ice cream from a blue belt container in a store and then putting it back on the shelf. But this is not true. The FDA has not made changes to its regulations in light of that viral video. A lot more ahead on KSAP News at 9 tonight, including new details about some of the youngest migrants taken from their families during the enforcement of the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy. Plus, the president confirming immigration raids planned for this weekend. Those stories and more after the break. Weeknights, streaming live, KSAT News at 9, cutting edge, live from the newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A new kind of KSAT. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. The day's most interesting stories in just three minutes. Expect information you can put into action. Money, it's personal. Adulting hacks. What's trending online? We're talking about it. And expect some spree thoughts. A curiosity that sometimes gets me in trouble, Myra. KSAT News at 9 on your KSAT app. You wouldn't spend $5 for this Apple when you could buy this one for 45 cents. So when it's time to replace your windows at your home, don't spend more for the same exact thing. Right now, get eight white double-hung windows for $31.95 installed with a lifetime warranty. But don't wait. This is a limited-time promotion, and don't forget to check out our great reviews online. 
Let the window source of San Antonio help you save money. Call us today, 210-549-4204. The window source of San Antonio. Christus Santa Rosa Health System with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, celebrating 150 years. The Children's Hospital of San Antonio, offering emergency and pediatric specialty care in Stone Oak. Our children deserve the very best in health care and at a moment's notice. With specially trained pediatric nurses and doctors available 24-7, your children will always have the care they need. With the Children's Hospital of San Antonio Emergency Center in Stone Oak, our children have the care they need where they need it most. President Trump confirming there will be nationwide deportation raids this Sunday. The president added that the major operation will take thousands of undocumented migrants, quote, out. ICE officials are expected to target at least 10 major cities. Mayors from several of those cities expected to be targeted have spoken out against the raids. President Trump said that the operation will target people with final deportation orders and, quote, bad players, end quote. An advocate says some families have already been targeted. ICE came to their house early in the morning and there were 15 ICE agents, 15 for one family. President Trump says he has the support of many American mayors. Ahead of the operation, hundreds of demonstrators gathered in places like Philadelphia and Michigan to protest the raids and demand detention centers be closed. Katie Blake is back with us tonight to talk a little bit more about the weekend ahead. Yes, I actually think tomorrow morning is going to be a great time to maybe get out for a jog or a morning walk or something like that because we're going to see our dew points go down a little bit. We'll take a little bit. I think a bit. And it's not going <laughs> to feel as muggy. I, I, I think it'll be enough that you'll notice it a little bit. And drop in dew points tonight is going to allow our morning temperatures to be in the low 70s versus the upper 70s. So every little bit we can get this time of year, uh, we will take it. So low 70s in the morning, but with some slightly drier air in place tomorrow, I expect a quick warm up into the afternoon. 97 your Saturday high temperature. Heat index should be able to sneak up to 99 or 100 degrees. Uh, looking at mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies tomorrow. I think we'll have a few more afternoon. Uh, fair weather clouds develop as things heat up a bit more in the afternoon. But here's a look at how dew points should fall through tomorrow morning. Low to mid 60s and then that will continue into the afternoon. We will have some higher dew point numbers in our far eastern counties and that's also where you guys could squeeze out an isolated shower or storm tomorrow afternoon. This does have to do with Barry moving inland during the day tomorrow. Some of the far outer bands on the west side of that system could move into our far eastern counties. And then as we get into Sunday, Barry will be lifting north through Louisiana, but some of the tail end shower activity uh, could be around on Sunday. So that's why we're going to keep in a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm for you on Sunday. Any rain tomorrow, I think that's going to be our far eastern counties and it will be rain free uh, here in San Antonio. Looking into next week, upper level high pressure moves back in. That spells things really hot. Plenty of sun. Heat index each afternoon next week will be 100 to up to 105. Sorry about that. <laughs> Now to sum up tonight's other top stories, at least 18 children under the age of two were separated from their parents at the border under the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy. That's according to a new report by the House Oversight Committee. And that report says half of those children were younger than one year old. Some of those kids were kept from their parents for 20 days, others up to six months. The zero tolerance policy was announced in April of 2018. It prosecuted all unauthorized border crossings, meaning that migrant families who crossed the border were separated. President Donald Trump ended the policy after widespread backlash. House Democrats are considering delaying Robert Mueller's high profile hearing next week because of concerns over the short length of the scheduled hearings. The former special counsel's testimony could be pushed back from the 17th of this month to the 24th. The delay would be in exchange for more time for questioning. The FTC has approved a roughly $5 billion fine for Facebook 
over privacy violations. The FTC launched an investigation into Facebook in the wake of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Cambridge Analytica was the political consulting firm accused of harvesting data from tens of millions of Facebook profiles. We have come to the end of another long week filled with a lot of big local headlines from the deaths of a woman and the man police say kidnapped her to a shocking discovery inside a Seguin home and the troubling story behind it. RJ Marquez with the weekend 210. The bodies of a woman and her ex-boyfriend who police said kidnapped her were found Tuesday just outside of Divine. Police say Jorge Jaramillo took Jessica Sanchez from her home in front of her daughters at gunpoint on June 30th. Her family believes she was verbally abused and controlled. They say she had an emergency protective order to keep Jaramillo from contacting her or going near her home. Thinking the law is going to protect, you know, and obviously that piece of paper meant nothing. The case is being investigated as a murder-suicide. Investigators arrested a woman Wednesday who allegedly lived at a Seguin home with her daughter for three years while the body of her mother decomposed in a bedroom. The arrest came days after police discovered the body of Jacqueline Louise Creighton. She was 71 years old when she died in 2016 inside the home. Police said her daughter, Delissa Nivon Creighton, did not help her mother when she fell and Jacqueline Louise died days later. Neighbors were shocked. We would rarely see any cars there, and when she would come and be late at night. Delissa Creighton is currently charged with injury to a child because police say she allowed her teen daughter to live in the home with the body as it deteriorated. Three people injured after a teen crashes an SUV into a northwest side taqueria. San Antonio firefighters say the teen was driving without a license and lost control of the SUV. The people inside suffered minor injuries. Police did not say if the teenager would face charges. Police responded to what was described as an all-out brawl earlier this week at the Ojos Locos Sports Bar on the near northwest side. Several fights broke out inside the restaurant, but no one was seriously hurt. Three people were detained but allowed to leave the sports bar after they received criminal trespass warnings. The Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission is investigating to determine whether the bar violated the Alcoholic Beverage Code. What was described as a loud thunder shook several South Texas residents from Lavernia to Beeville. Local authorities could not explain what caused the sound, and the military said they were not responsible, leaving the loud boom as one of the summer's biggest mysteries. The Week in 210, just one of the series exclusive here on the News at 9. Tune in Monday for an all-new adulting hack when we'll be talking grilling. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what's trending on this Friday night with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra. Yes, thank God it is Friday. It has <laughs> been a long week. Uh, but if you guys uh, want to check out some place this weekend that is a pretty cool, authentic Mexican spot, uh, then you definitely want to check out this place, Amiga Cafe. So this was okay. the uh, latest edition of Flavor Faves with the uh, digital journalist Erica Hernandez puts together uh, each week for us. And this was a pretty cool spot because I didn't realize that um, I didn't really know much about central Mexican food. You know, we're used to enchiladas and all sure, that Sure, kind of yeah. This has some pretty interesting things. Like there's a thing called the pambazo. Is that what we're looking at here? <laughs> yes, that okay. is this guy right here. It's kind of like a torta, except it is sort of a, it's a wet sandwich. Oh, yeah. uh, wow. So <laughs> Okay. It includes potatoes, uh, chorizo, and queso fresco also, and a weird, like, not a weird, but a red pepper sauce. <laughs> so it looks pretty good. Uh, I remember Erica actually brought some into the newsroom, and I didn't try that, but I did try the mole that they had. It was oh, pretty good. Mole yeah. is always so good. Always, right? Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to check this out, head to our website. Okay. okay next story here, um, and this is probably one of the uh, first signs that I am getting old here <laughs> because the Mala Luna Music Festival, a very popular music festival that comes every year, the lineup was announced for this. Okay. Um, okay. Are, are you feeling old because you don't know any of the people? I don't know any, know of, the any of these. Uh, All right, performers. I'm going to look uh, over your shoulder here, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty solid for me too. Yeah. Again, this is a huge music festival. Comes here every year, uh, so a lot of people are going to be excited about this. October 26th, 27th at Wolf Stadium. And uh, I don't know, I may have to go out there and just check out what's For the uh, kids. Happening. Great, great for the kids. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, last one here. Okay, this is something I definitely kind of know a little bit about. Okay, uh, yes, this is more my wheelhouse, RJ. Right. Okay, yes, home shopping, cyber, <laughs> cyber yeah. shopping. 
<laughs> as opposed to being at a music festival. Um, okay, Amazon Prime Day, of course, coming up Monday. Uh, so Marilyn Moritz, uh, one of our uh, awesome consumer reporters here, put together sort of some tips to navigate through Amazon Prime Day. The one that I found interesting was uh, to put your items uh, that you're interested in getting in your cart now. Well, you mean you can sit on our there couches go. in our sweats <laughs> yeah. and shop for Amazon <laughs> Prime good. rather yeah. than Sounds like go a to a music festival. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, RJ. Thanks, Myra. We'll be right back. A drill team from Hallsville, Texas. I'm the marketing director at the Chick-fil-A in Longview, Texas. Every year we do a novelty routine. Last year we were inflatable cows. Some lady posted it online, got so many views. That made the video the cow scene. <laughs> the morning we were leaving for our nationals competition. We surprised them and sent them off with a Chick-fil-A cow. We were starstruck. We just wanted to let them know we love them. We knew we had to make this cow proud. <laughs> Aziz Oriental Rug and Porch would like to thank San Antonio for 30 years of business. And now, it's time to retire, and that means we are having the biggest sale in our store's history. We are taking up to 80% off everything in our store. Every style, color, shape, and size. After traveling all over the world, we have developed a remarkable and elegant collection of traditional and contemporary style oriental rugs. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime deal. Visit our showroom today while inventory lasts at 2102 North Loop, 1604 West. April 15th is World Art Day, and our city is one great big art exhibit. But AARP in San Antonio thinks today should be your day. So connect with us at our dancing and gardening events, or explore your neighborhood. We're working with you to make it more livable for everyone. We're here in our community helping you live la vida buena. So give life a splash of color. And take on today and every day with AARP in San Antonio. Stories you can't miss. Intense radio. Three minutes. The nine at nine. The most interesting stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and here at home. Give us three minutes. The nine at nine. Only on Case at News at nine. That's all our time here tonight. Thanks so much for watching the news at nine. I'm Myra Arthur. Have a great weekend.